Oh, that's, that's a better fish. Oh, yes. Nice rod. That's the badger. Another nice one. Welcome to a new video, we're back on the bank. You join me on a very short session. I'm on a local club lake, which is actually on a golf course and um, I've not fished it before. So it's a little bit different for me. I've only got a couple of hours and I'm doing something slightly different. You might be able to see down there. I've got the kit set up. I'm doing a bit of float fishing for a bit of anything really. Um, I've got some pellets, some maggot, and a few other bits and bobs with me. And I'm gonna just see if I can catch the water up in the layers, um, literally sort of a foot or two under the surface, maybe even on the top. I'm gonna to just spray it with either pellet and maggot and just alternate between hook baits, see if I can get a few bites. The aim is either roach and rud or possibly carp. Now this lake has got quite a lot of fish in it. They're not very big, it's a very sort of match style venue, although I don't believe they do many matches on it. I think it's more of a sort of pleasure of water. Um, but it's a very unusual shape. This is like a little bay and there's quite a few fish up along this reed line opposite me, which I've seen walking the path the other side. Now I don't know the lake very well. Um, I've had a little bit of a walk along the pathway, um, which I think is what the golfers use to get around to the different tees. But um, I really don't know it very well, so it's been a little bit unusual walking about on here. So I've had a, a little scout about, found this little swim. It seems quite nice, a little bit sheltered from the sun. I've only got a couple of hours, so it is starting to cool down now. So let's get the, um, get the float out there, get some feed going in, and see if we can get a few bites. Well, we've got our first bite. Not quite sure what we got. Looks like a roach. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a rud. That's a cracking fish. Look at that then. Lovely rud. My little pellet. Lovely rod. Yeah, always oh, come on. Darn. Wow, that's a little wow. Uh, that's a little rod. Hmm. God, a fat little rod. Jesus Christ. Pretty lovely light bait. Look at that. Fat little rod. Burying themselves in that weed. Uh, this is wicked. I need to get myself better now, better organised. Ow! Ooh, hello. Who's that there? Kicking right, it's gone into the weed. Come on, out you come. Is it another big rod? Come on, what the hell is this? Is that a big one? Yes, it is. Bloody hell, it looks so good. Oh, is that like a 
honey bread. No, it's a, oh, it's a honey bread. My God. Yeah, it's a honey bread. Whew. There's just so many fish in here. Some of them are just tiny. Yeah, that's a little one. I need a back rub vest. It's a good life beat, that one. You're probably wondering why I've come up to um, a little lake like this to do um, some float fishing, but I was meant to be going on the river. Oh, it's come off. I was meant to be going on the river, so I got a load of my uh, kit set up to go on the river, and um, unfortunately, I uh, got called out by the missus yesterday because her, um, her nan and ended up having a bit of a bad term when they were out for food. So I had to go and collect Parker, which um, basically meant I uh, didn't have time to get sorted out. And also, I had to change my plans today. So, uh, Oh, I know. I was going to go to a different venue, which uh, turns out was closed because the fish had been spawning, or the carp had been spawning. It doesn't. It does annoy me sometimes on on lakes when the carp start spawning. They shut it, even though it's a it's a mixed fishery. I don't know why they don't just have no carp fishing. And, you know, float only or something like that, so that people are generally fishing for other stuff. Because obviously, just because a carp is spawning doesn't mean any other species are. You could easily sit there and, and fish for the roach. No one's worried, but no one seems to be bothered when the, the roach is spawning. Have a little one. There's a lovely, lovely, chunky little fish. Da -da -da. And another one, one a jock. It's good fun there. It'd be good to bring the lad up here. One a chuck. Oh, oh, hello. Is that a bigger one? Feels bigger. Oh, that could be the rudder after. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that, that's a lovely one. Oh, what a lovely fish. Oh, look at that, that's an absolute beauty. Look at that, that's what we were after. Probably not quite a pound. He's not a pound, but Ooh. that is a lovely fish. Jesus Christ! Yeah, that is a lovely fish, though. Be nice if I was getting them like that, Chuck. So, the kit I'm using, I'm using a Drenum Series 7 13 foot tension specimen float rod. Lovely rod, um, teamed up with a cheap little Drenum reel, this is one of the Red Range reels, little float reel. Um, I've got six pound line on there. Um, I tend to use six pound because I can pretty much fish for everything, um, although it's heavy for smaller fish. Um, it also means that if I want to switch for the carp, potentially, it's got enough power there for me to able to fish for sort of reasonable sized carp. Um, the difference I do when I'm fishing for smaller fish, like I am today for like the rod, is I fish a light hook length. So the hook length is three pound. I think it's down to a, I think it's a size 18 hook. It's a red hook, which matches the maggot. And I'm just fishing a loaded wag. This is two and a half gram. And I've got some float stops holding it in place. 
basically I have one float stop above just to stop the bait being able to move the, um, the, the weight of the float and then I have two below and the reason I have two below is because when you cast out you do put quite a lot of force against that float so if you only have one on there it would potentially slip quite a bit now and then so it's going to change your depth so I always fish two to stop it from slipping and that is the rig very very simple single maggot usually sometimes a double and then you just send it out in front a little twitch oh there we go and there we go as simple as that oh he's falling off and we're getting loads of really little ones and they're just um a lot of them are banking off you hook them and you get them in sort of halfway and then they just flop off where they're so erratic they're just flying everywhere in this barbless hook i don't want to be using any um micro barb or anything you can use micro barb but when i'm fishing with little fish like this i ain't going to be messing around trying to un unhook them oh that was a nice bite Oh, has he come off? Oh no, he's still on there. A slightly better one. And there we go. Nice little rod. What's that, sort of four ounces? But, um, yeah, we've had some... I've had, um, I reckon I've had four nice fish today. Um, between sort of ten, ten ounces and a pound. Which um, I'm quite happy with, to be honest. It's a nice, uh, nice fish. They look lovely. When they get to that side, they go all golden and look absolutely stunning. And they are really pretty fish, Rod. Whereas the roach um, obviously have that sil silver colour to them. The Rod, when they get bigger, have a lovely golden sheen to them. But... Um, Getting quite a few fish, literally just one a chuck really. Voila! It is, it's a roach. I haven't had, I think I've only had one one roach today, so that's, well that's roach number two that. Oh, oh god. Da! Ah, god he's lovely. That is a tiny little fish. <laughs> oh dear, lovely, lovely little fish. It's really enjoyable fishing, to be fair. I don't know what it's like as a video. Be interesting to see what um what you guys think of it as a video. Seeing carp fishing all the time, I bet no one's really interested in uh, me fishing for rud. But it's a really, really nice, enjoyable way of spending a couple of hours instead of sort of chasing carp around. Just sitting, chilling, just want to chuck, getting bites, nice and enjoyable. Can't really knock it really. So that, that didn't hook. <laughs> oh, it's a perch. Look at that, it's got a little perch. Oh, look at that, that is a beautiful little fish. Look at that, perfect little fish. I imagine he has never seen a hook before, that little guy. Perfect little perch. You never know, he might grow on to be an absolute unit of a fish going around terrorising those rod. Right, I've put on a new hook length. Definitely was uh, bumping a lot of fish off. I think that last rig or hook length was um, absolutely shot. There's basically no red coating on it where I'd had so many fish. I think the point had pretty much gone. I've also lengthened the rig slightly so it's dropping a little bit deeper as um, the bites have slowed up a little bit. Literally only a six, six inches difference and the, um, the bites have started again. 
What I've noticed though is I'm starting to get a lot more perch now. The perch have obviously switched on in the low light. I seem to be getting more perch than um, rud. So I'm going to say because of the, uh, the low light conditions, the, um, the perch seem to have uh, got their confidence up, which is pretty common. Perch um, definitely prefer low light conditions. They don't like it at all, to be fair, when it's... Um, It's bright and sunny. Um, I'm not going to give it too much longer because the light is starting to go. I can know. Uh, I can still hear the odd guy around golfer wise, I think. Oh, that's a nice bite. What I like about it is it's um it is simple fishing. Oh, you come off. But you've got to, you've still got to think about it. You've still got to think about, you know, the depth, the bait you're using, the feeding. It's not it's not just a case of ch chucking it out there and hoping for the best. Like you have got to change things up. Like I find the, the bigger fish seem to be coming when I've been putting more feed in. So sometimes, you know, like now I could leave it put a few pouches of, of maggot in onto the, the area I'm just chucking the float out. Yeah, the problem is the birds then come out, these ducks are really irritating me. But you just give it a good spray. Like that. Unfortunately these ducks are uh, a pain because they're basically going to get a float in the face in a second which is uh, Every time I get a cast out now, they then spook, but they don't seem to realise the same thing's going to happen every time. Like ducks, they really aren't very intelligent. Oh! Oh, is that a better one? That feels better. Come on. Yeah. Oh, beautiful fish. Look at that. Look at that. It's another lovely one. Oh. I'm just getting covered in covered in muck and everything. Look at that. Cool, if they were all like that, it'd be absolutely brilliant. He's absolutely hoovered that. Jeez, mate. Quite oh, hoovered that right down. God, they're so friggin' lively. Look at that. Lovely fish. Well, that'll be the end of it. Not a big one. Probably about eight ounces. But lovely, lovely fish. Pulling out bait. Looks like pellet or something. Might be some of the floaters, but um, yeah, nice way to end it. Happy days. Let's let him go. Off you go, mate. Off he goes. Right, well that's the end of the session then. A um, couple of hours at um, about four or five, really nice rud. Really enjoy getting out fishing simple float fishing tactics, fishing high in the water, spreading it with maggot, and um, yeah, just getting nearly nearly a bite of chuck. Um, like I said, I had a few nice ones. Um, a lot of them were really small. Um, but it's been really enjoyable again another raw video hopefully you do like the raw style of filming but when i'm fishing a couple of hours it's pointless me trying to get nice shots and make it into a bit more of a, a cinematic feel because at the end of the day you're just losing fishing hours so um 
obviously it works well with your carp fishing when you've got the rods out fishing that you can sit back and get some nice footage and capture what's going on around you but when you're doing this style of fishing especially when you're fishing on the flow trying to keep the feed going in late and often you haven't really sorry just got a mosquito trying to bite me you haven't really got the time to um do that sort of stuff with the camera so um running it on gopro definitely saves a lot of time and hopefully it captures the sort of rawness and the action as and, as and when it's going on so anyway hopefully you are subscribed but if you're not remember to hit the subscribe button before you go check out the social media shown on screen and um, i'll see you in the next video and um, if you're getting out be lucky